Who is that? Huh? I guess I kind of forgot. Hey guys, I'm Hiren, and this is Double H. Today we'll be unboxing the OnePlus 8T. Get ready. So this is the OnePlus 8T's retail packaging. It is the same as well the retail packaging since the OnePlus 7T. So the version you're seeing here is the Luna Super version. It has a frosted matte finish, which is less of a fingerprint magnet, and is well looks better in my opinion. Also, this is the 256 gigabyte ROM and 12 gigabyte RAM version. Now let's start the unboxing. We'll start with peeling off the plastic cover. Bear with me for a moment guys, it was a bit difficult to open the box. The box was definitely under pressure during shipping, so kudos to Amazon for the best shipping ever. Okay, so we finally get to open the box. So, uh, just on the top of the box is the OnePlus 8T, which we will get to later. Okay, so under the box, we have our accessories for the OnePlus 8T. Okay, so these are the paperwork, and this is an invitation letter which comes with the SIM injector tool. There are a lot of paperwork, so I'm gonna just speed through them. And we do have our OnePlus stickers. You can stick them anywhere you want. We do get a silicone case from OnePlus, but it does become a bit yellowish in time, so I do not recommend using it. Next up, we have OnePlus's iconic red and white cable. So it is a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable. You could say it's pretty well cable managed. Next up we have the new Warp Charge 65. It's been pretty long since OnePlus made a new standard for fast charging. And here it is, the Warp Charge 65 Watt. Okay, it's finally time to look at the phone itself. We have the usual plastic covering. Let's just peel it off. So guys, this is the new OnePlus 8T. Okay, so let's get on with the specs. The phone has a Snapdragon 865 chipset, 8 to 12 GB of RAM, 128 to 256GB of storage depending on the variant you buy, a 4500mAh power battery, a 6.55 inch 120Hz Full HD Plus display. The OnePlus 8T comes out of the box with the latest Android 11 and Oxygen OS 11. Also the one I have here is the Luna Silver version, it has a frosted glass finish on the back. Now let's move on to the cameras. The cameras on the OnePlus 8T are pretty average. This is the 12 megapixel shot, and the next one is the 48 megapixel shot. You don't see much of a difference here. Although something to keep in mind is that the 48 megapixel camera requires a lot of light, so it fades out most of the color if it doesn't get the amount of light it needs. The difference in resolution and detail isn't much visible, so 
If you can, find out which one of these is the 48 megapixel shot. Comment down below. Using the macro lens is not advisable, I guess. It just doesn't get the colors right, and I think cropping in the ordinary photos from the 12 megapixel camera is way better. So guys, I'm recording this video with the front camera. It is 16 megapixel single camera, and the audio is of the phone itself. So you guys just decide how the audio is. I think it's pretty good. It's all right, not the best, but I guess you can make do with it. So. According to me, this camera is pretty average, like I guess a, a little about average. And just you guys comment down below what you think of it. So now I'm taking the video in the rear camera. It is not the best that OnePlus can offer. The OnePlus 8 Pro is a better camera phone in my opinion. The OnePlus 8 Pro has a better camera system and also better software optimizations for camera. This phone comes in 120Hz refresh rate right after the box. OnePlus 7 Pro has a 90Hz refresh rate and I do have that phone. So this is the OnePlus 7 Pro and this is the OnePlus 8T. To tell the truth, I can't see much of a big difference between 90 and 120. Well, maybe if I keep using this phone for a while and then try using this, maybe, but it's not a big difference. Yes, I do see it's not like a big leap, but in case like if you use a 60 hertz screen, this is going to be mind blowing. A jump from 90 to 120 isn't significant, but it is from 60 to 120 or 60 to 90 at least. So another difference between the flagship and the, well, this is a flagship, but I'm talking about the 8 Pro and the 7 Pro, etc. So they have a full, sorry, the quad HD display, and this has a full HD display, which means this is 1080p and the other ones are at 1440p. But tell the truth, there isn't much difference between those two. Just like the jump from 90 hertz to 120 hertz, the difference from 1080 and 1440 is not much noticeable. So it's something to consider. I charge this phone only once, but I still feel how fast the charging is. This 65 watt charging was really fast and it sped up to 100% in almost no time. So it's fast. Keep in mind, this is just a first impressions video. I just got this phone, so I cannot fully review it. The full review will be coming in about a week. Stay tuned for that. Subscribe, turn on the notifications, like the video if you like it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.